Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the 2021 Ohio 11th District Special Election and the important impacts it will have on Congress and who I think is going to win this election. So, this is a district, we're going to get right into it. This is a district that voted 80% for Marsha Fudge. She won it by 60 points over Laverne Gore. In the, in the November 2020 House race, as you can see, she essentially won, you know, the five sixths of the vote. So this is a very democratic district. Anyone who tells you the GOP is going to win this seat is uh, mistaken. This is a, a seat that is drawn as a democratic vote. Sink, as you can see, it's quite gerrymandered. And if I can zoom in here, which I don't think I can, but the seat is a vote sink designed to be a a, a VRA district. It is majority minority, as you can see, as fifty two point five percent of um uh of people uh, people of this districts. Uh, identify as uh, black. So this is a majority minority district that serves as a pack of the, I guess, uh, I'll pull it up right here, the cities of Cleveland and the cities of Akron. So that's Summit County and Cuyahoga County. And we have a really interesting primary going on here. So right now, I'll read it out loud. On March 10, 2021, Marsha Fudge resigned her seat in the U.S. House of Representatives after being confirmed by the U.S. Senate to serve as the United States Secretary of Housing and Urban Development in the Biden administration. So she was a progressive pick for the Democratic Party. She wasn't necessarily a progressive herself, but she uh, was perceived to help the uh, Joe Biden with the progressive base at the time. And Governor Mike DeWine, the Republican governor, has set the primary date for August 3rd in the general election for November 2nd, which, again, concurrent with the special election Ohio's 15th district, which we're not be talking about too much in this video, and the Virginia New in New Jersey gubernatorial races. So, you know, uh, in three months, we're going to have the special or the primary or the we're going to have the general election in which uh, whoever the Democratic nominee is is going to beat the Republican nominee. Um, and we are going to have to see who wins this primary. So the major candidates for the Democrats, there are only two we're going to be talking about. And it is Chantel Brown, who is the Cuyahoga County Council chair uh, council member. And she was the chair of the Democratic Party in Cuyahoga County. And former State Senator Nina Turner. So this is kind of an ideology ban battle. And by the way, there is uh, actually Shirley Smith, who's a former state senator as well. Uh, she's kind of a minor, more moderate candidate who would take a couple votes away from Chantel Brown, but most this is a two-way race between Turner and Brown. They're the only ones who have a chance of winning. And right now, Nina Turner is a candidate that, in all likelihood, is more likely to be perceived as the most well-known candidate in this race. And I think she's more well-known. I'd, he I'd heard of her, uh, you know, going back to 2019, 2018. She was a big part of the Bernie Sanders campaign in 2020, and she was floated as a potential VP pick for Joe Biden, so she had much more name recognition. Chantel Brown didn't know who she was until uh, a couple months ago when I learned that she was running for this race, and she is the chair of the Cuyahoga County Democratic Party, and, you know, these these, these, these three candidates are quite controversial, and I'll tell you why. So, first of all, this race it was, expect, it was not expected to be close, and, you know, as you can see, back in April, Nina Turner had a significant lead over Chantel Brown, in some ways, she was leading by 30, and now that lead has kind of just become a, a, a pretty, you know, I guess, an unstable 5 to 10 point lead, so, and I did call, uh, on Twitter, I did say for people to, to put their predictions in their replies, we're going to read those in a second, but this race is going to be closer than most expected it to be. I thought this was going to be safe for Nina Turner, and it's not going to be safe for her. I don't think she's going to win by, you know, that max 15, but a uh, very, very competitive race going on here, and you know, the polling we've seen, Turner's ahead in most, she, she was tied with Brown in one poll, but there's been a lot of data from inside the Turner campaign that says, you know, maybe they're not as confident, and this race fundamentally should be leading towards Chantel Brown, because this, as, as we know, um, a Democratic districts that are uh, plurality or majority of the electorate are black voters, that is likely to work in more moderate candidates' favor. Now, black voters, a lot of them do back progressives, but Generally speaking, in primaries, you know, they voted for for Joe Biden in huge numbers in 2020, and in 2016, I think there was a poll that showed that Sanders won, like, 3% of black voters to Clinton's 95% nationwide in the primary. I think it was less lopsided than that, but Clinton certainly was the favorite among black voters, so black voters are more ideo ideologically moderate, but they can back progressives, and Turner is more progressive than Chantel Brown, but they're both pretty progressive Democrats, and, he, and both of them would pretty would, I think, vote with their party for the most part. Turner would be more of a safe Democratic vote than Chantel Brown would. Uh, she is more progressive, and there's been, you know, allegations of Brown taking money from Republicans, which I think she has actually admitted to, but that's a whole other topic that we're going to get into later in this video. So I think we're going to do this. Um, first, we're going to talk about, I think, the the, the uh, controversy in this race. So 
Um, Nina Turner is a progressive candidate who has faced a lot of scrutiny in the past for her march with the Democratic Party. You know, we're going to be talking about one instance where earlier this year, I think, or in 2020, she referred to Joe Biden, and I'm not going to say it because it is uh, profanity. She referred to him as a bull of SHIT, which I cannot say because I do not want to get demonetized. But it, if you can spell, you probably know what that means. And, you know, not exi- she, she, she hasn't had the best relationship with Joe Biden in the past. Biden hasn't endorsed anyone in this race. It would be crazy for him, too, because this is such a competitive and divisive race. Uh, but I don't think that her and Joe Biden have a very good relationship, quite frankly. She backed Bernie Sanders, who is his main opponent in the 2020 Democratic primary. And she is someone who uh, differs with him on a lot of ideology. She has said in the past, you know, she believes Medicare for all is the floor. She said Joe Biden should do this, 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 you know, to achieve a more progressive uh, agenda. Joe Biden has not done those things. And uh, Nina Turner is someone that uh, has used more squad-like rhetoric. And I think that she'd be kind of a part of the squad, you know. Her and Cori Bush are very similar. Cori Bush has endorsed her. You know, AOC was campaigning for her earlier this week, or I guess last week by the time this video comes out. So... This is a race that is divided by ideology, and I think that if Joe Biden could vote in this race, he'd probably vote for Chantel Brown. Not for sure, because she has a controversy of her own, but still, I guess this kind of reminds me of a of a primary where the establishment is certainly backing one candidate. Even if they're not publicly endorsing them, I think that you know Joe Biden probably wants Chantel Brown to win this race because if everything goes according to plan for him, she'd be a more quiet voice in Congress and would likely be um, just kind of your average Democrat. And that's kind of what Marsha Fudge was. Now, she Fudge actually did uh, run a campaign for House Speaker in 2018. She lost, obviously, Nancy Pelosi was the House Speaker, but uh, I guess in early 2019 after the Democrats re- uh, re- retook the majority. But she is, uh, I guess, someone who is, wasn't really a part of the squad, didn't really speak out against uh, you know the establishment Democratic Party as much as AOC or Cori Bush have done. So... That is something I think that Joe Biden and a lot of the establishment Democrats have in mind. Now, Chantel Brown, she's had some controversy of her own. She has uh, been accused of being transphobic, as she did misgender her dead friend, which obviously in a in a party that is overwhelmingly, their, their electorate does support uh, LGBTQ rights. Uh, she has been accused of being a transphobe that cannot help her with the electorate. She has also been accused, like I said, taking uh, money from Republican groups. And I'll actually talk about this in a second as well. Just to kind of pull it up, uh, Nina Turner's opponent, Chantel Brown, is facing a potential ethics probe for $17 million in contracts. So that's not a good look for her. It's certainly not something that she wants to uh, have uh, with her. And, you know, she's had a lot of scandal. She's certainly the more scandal play candidate. Now, before I reveal who I think is going to win, we're just going to look at uh, the predictions for this race. So uh, at er- earlier, 8- 8.25 in the morning on August 1st, I tweeted, OK, drop your final prediction for your high 11th winner in the replies. Comments will be featured in the next video. So, Matthew Tower, viewer of the channel, says Turner plus six. Uh, Netflix and So Chill. Um, shout out to the name. Actually, I got a kick out of reading that name. I, I got to say, it's a pretty clever name. Uh, Turner plus ten. Uh, they also said, I also think Sean Teller refused to endorse Nina and threatens to run as an independent. That's actually not possible due to Ohio law. Um, and uh, yeah, not possible. Red Donkey says he would put plus a hundred. Um, <laughs> Khan says Turner plus four. All things election says uh, it's something in between Brown plus thirty and Turner plus forty. So uh, that was a joke. Chaotic politics says says uh, Turner by four to six. All things election made a serious prediction to Turner by eight. Uh, and they said I'm praying if this is in your video, it's a look how good this prediction was. Not a ha ha. They were so wrong. So we're gonna have to see. Uh, Avery says Turner two to ten percent, but I still worry. Um, they uh, Sanjay gave a uh, I guess a uh, specific description. Brown starts an early lead, but comes back from by 10.3%. Brown doesn't concede and goes on a Twitter rant. Nina has a big rally. Everyone is happy. Brown finally concedes. Brown does not endorse Nina. So this is a divisive primary, and I don't think I've mentioned this in this video, but this is a primary. You know, I, I know Twitter's not real life, and I know Twitter's super toxic, but this is really a divisive primary between more moderates on t- moderate Democrats on Twitter who are back- backing Chantel Brown, and more, and more, you know, more progressive uh, Democrat, uh, Democrats backing Nina Turner. So... Uh, Again, I think it's going to be really close, for the record. Turner by 3, Turner by 5 to 7. I lead towards Turner, but Brown could absolutely win. Brown is slight favorite, and he's had a victory from 3 to 4 points. This is the first, I think, Brown uh, winner I've seen. Turner by 10 to 18, Turner by 8. Someone has Shirley Smith winning. I think, that, I think that's a joke, because Shirley Smith, in, you know, in the polls has been uh, lagging behind. You know, I, I can pull it up, actually. Uh, she's been lagging behind, as you can see. 
uh, undecided or other. In these polls, uh, she's actually rarely been polled anyways. She's at 3% in this poll, um, so you know, not the most well-known candidate. So, uh, this guy says, uh, or Gene Runninger says, uh, Turner plus 30, Turner by at least 10, Turner by 5, Turner plus 8. There were a ton of replies to this tweet. I'm not going to read all of them. There were, I don't know, there were over 100 replies, 110 likes. There, there were more like replies than likes, let's say that. So this is... Uh, th this was a high turnout tweet, and I thank everyone for replying to this tweet. Unfortunately, I could not get to them all. I got to the top ones that had the most liked. I, I think I liked almost every reply that I could. Uh, but you know, you know, this reply had 37 likes. Uh, uh, a Netflix and socialist reply had 37 likes. Uh, some of these replies had seven. You know, 36 likes, 41 likes, five likes, 18 likes. So, yeah. Now, my prediction: I do think Nina Turner is going to win, and I think you know, on paper, Brown would be winning. You know, because she is in a a district that is more likely to lean towards moderate Democrats with it being majority black. But at the end of the day, I think Chantel Brown just has too much baggage to win. That being said, I think it's really close to, you know, it's barely, uh, like, my, my final rating is likely Turner, but it's at the lower end of likely. It's it's not as safe as it was, you know, even a month ago for Nina Turner, you know, uh, and she could easily lose because even though Chantel Brown has a lot of baggage, we could easily just see an incredible, you know, surge of black voters on election day that come out for Chantel Brown, and, you know, this district, I think if it were, you know, two-thirds black, I think Chantel Brown would be favored, because I think she is going to narrowly eke out the black vote. It'll be close, but I think that Turner's victory is going to be mostly coming from uh, white white progressive voters and from voters in the city of Akron. So, I think we're going to see Turner do, uh, you know, Turner kind of match Chantel Brown's performance in the inner city of Cleveland, which is mostly in this district, and uh, the suburb, you know, the, the more suburban or affluent parts of Cleveland could be backing Chantel Brown. But I think Turner's saving grace is uh, white progressives in Akron, which I know uh, Akron has a significant black population, but I think that white progressives in Akron are going to come out big for Nina Turner. And uh, in most polls, they've been big for her. And I do think that that's going to give her the victory. So uh, Brown c could do better in, in you know, suburbs like Cleveland Heights, for example. Uh, or the suburbs, uh, suburban areas of Summit County that are in the district, but we're still talking about a uh, in a district that would lean towards Turner because of her strength in Akron. And you know, Brown, I I think that Brown's path to victory lies doing well in Cleveland because Cleveland is obviously a big city, a big part of this district. And I think that if she wins Cleveland by more than uh, you know maybe ten percent, I think she can absolutely win the primary. But if it's under that or Turner wins Cleveland, I think she's favored. So. Final prediction, Turner by 6 or 7, could easily be 5, you know, in that range, but special elections are hard to predict, and I think, you know, I, I modeled this out earlier, I'm not going to show it because it was an inconsistent model, but or not, it was more of a forecast, actually. I think Turner's going to get 48% of the vote, and I do think that uh, Brown's going to get 41 42% of the vote. We could see Shirley Smith get up to 5% of the vote, maybe 6%, but I don't think she, she can have too big of an impact, but if she does impact the race, it'll be in Nina Turner's favor, because she would be taking a couple votes away from Chantel Brown, but... I really, I think that Turner's main edge here is because she has name recognition. I think there are going to be a lot of voters. You know, I, I, I'm on Twitter way too much, so it, it, everyone's talking about this race. But I think that there are going to be voters who are going to come out and they're going to say, I don't know who to vote for. I don't know either of these candidates that well. But I know Nina Turner because she's a former state senator because she worked with Bernie Sanders. And I'm going to vote for her as a progressive. So I think that's to give Turner the edge. This could easily turn into a New York City mayoral primary where Andrew Yang has the, rec the, the name recognition that it kind of uh, all falls out. Uh, and he's losing the polling lead, which, you know, Turner's polling lead has certainly narrowed, but I do think she's going to win, and I think she's going to win by six. So, th that's it for this video. I'm not going to be live, uh, unfortunately. I planned that night, so uh, you're not going to see me live analyzing this race, but um, I think Pro Political Talk might be live, so that'll be cool. But thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Turn on post notifications so you never miss one of my uploads. And yeah, thank you. See you all tomorrow.